When it comes to digital painting, controlling your shapes is a critical skill. In this video, we'll look at the Protect Alpha feature in Affinity Photo and Designer, and we'll see how it can give you greater control over your art. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're talking about the Protect Alpha feature in Affinity Programs. It works pretty much the same in Affinity Photo and Designer, and I'll give you a demo in both programs. So first, let's look at what this Protect Alpha feature actually means. So I'll start an Affinity Photo here, and I have a circle. Let me just rasterize it just to keep things simple. So it's a pixel circle. And a very common exercise when doing digital painting is shading a sphere. So let's see how we could do that. I'll select a brush. I'll just do something soft and round. Now the way you'd usually do this is you'd select the color and maybe do something a little bit darker. And I'll select my pixel layer and I'll start to shade my sphere. Now you can see with the edges here, I'm having a very hard time getting it to be exact. I can make my brush small and zoom in, but even then it's really hard to get that edge. And you can see I'm actually overrunning it a little bit there. If I try to shade it on the edge here, you can see it's becoming very undefined and overrun. I could try using a solid brush. But once again, it's just really a pain to try to get that to fit exactly in the right position. So let me undo this. To make my life easier, what I can use is the Protect Alpha feature. And that's a function of the brushes in the Affinity programs. So I have my brush selected here. What I can do is I can check Protect Alpha. And watch what happens when I paint over my sphere. You can see it's not going outside of my sphere's area. Let me make it darker so you can see it. It's staying perfectly on top of those pixels. And that is basically what the Protect Alpha feature helps us do. We can only write on the pixels that already exist. So because this area out here is transparent, it's not actually showing when I paint on it. But my sphere here will show. And I can highlight the other side. Maybe I'll make this side bright. Now, by the way, I'm using a mouse for this whole demo. It would definitely be better to use a stylus, but that's way under my bed somewhere. So I'm using a mouse, but if you have a stylus, this is definitely the ideal way to paint digitally. And that's how I paint on my iPad. So you can see what's really useful is that I can actually continue shading here. And I just have very easy control of the edges. And that's really what Protect Alpha is gonna help you do in a nutshell. Now, if you're wondering what alpha means, it essentially means transparency, which is the same as opacity. To show you how this feature works with layers, let me create two spheres here. Let's make one kind of purple. Let's make another one back to our blue. And I'll rasterize both. So with my paintbrush selected, I have Protect Alpha selected. And let's say I just want to shade this one blue sphere. With it selected, I can darken my color here. And you can see I'm just affecting that sphere because that layer is selected. If I want to shade the other one, I can go there. I'll choose some darker color. And I can shade it that way. I can go back to my top sphere, work on it again more if I want later. And I can do what I want just on that layer. Now, word of warning, a very common mistake people make, and I make this all the time, is I create a new layer, I select my brush, I select a color, and I try to paint, and nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens is because I have Protect Alpha selected. So if I turn off Protect Alpha, now I can paint on my layer again. So it's very easy to forget when you have it turned on. When it's turned on, you're not going to be able to paint on any new areas. So if you're using a brush and it's just not working, probably you accidentally turned on Protect Alpha or forgot to turn it off. Now in many other programs, Protect Alpha works on a layer level. So it's something that you enable on the layer. I believe that's how it works in Procreate, if I remember correctly. Maybe even Photoshop too. But the thing to remember if you're coming from those other programs is that with Affinity, protecting the alpha is a setting on the brush, not the layer. Okay, now let's look at how we can use this feature in Affinity Designer. And I have some vector line work here. You can see it's this kind of cartoon bear. If I click on the node tool, you can see really it's just a bunch of different nodes here. And there's all these different curves, but I'm just gonna collapse all this and just leave it at this bear level here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the pixel persona. So that's this button up here, pixel persona. And what I can actually do is I can create a new pixel layer. And I'm going to use the fill tool to fill in parts of my image. And there are many ways to do this in Affinity Designer. You can fill the vectors themselves. But if you're settled on your line work and you want to actually use some more expressive types of pixel brushes, you can do this method I'm going to show you here. So let's say I want to fill in the bear itself. So I'll select a color brown. And with my fill tool selected, I'll make sure it says current layer and below. So this is going to fill in the area based on the outlines of the current layer and the layer below. So if I click on this here, you can see it filled in the bear's head. Now, if I zoom in, there's still some white areas here. Let me undo that. You can change the tolerance here. I always forget which way is which, but I think higher is gonna make it get rid of that white. So I'll click this. 
And you can see it did a better job of getting rid of that white here. I can also fill in this area here. What I can do is I can call this bear's head. And I fill it in above the line work, but then I go and I move it below and watch how it changes. It looks a little better that way, I think. I can create another pixel layer for the bear's body. So I'll go and I'll fill in this area here and the leg. Then I'll move it below. So what I like to do is fill in different areas like this. So I'll do that now and then we'll come back to it. So I filled in my bear here and this is just flat coloring right now. And you can see the different areas I've created here. So let me toggle the plants. I made a bunch of green pixels for the plants, the trees I made something else, the bear I made his body one area and I made his head another, some details with the eyes and ears. So if I remove the line work, you can see I have these areas of paint. So now what I can do is using protect alpha, I can start shading in my design. So I'll start with the bear's head. So I have the head selected here and let me select my paintbrush. I'll go into the pixel persona again and I'll select protect alpha. So I have the bear's head selected. Reminder, that's this part and I'll select the brown. Let's darken it a little bit and I can start shading in the area here. I'll go to the body. Now maybe the light's coming from the right side. So I'll make some darker around here. Some shadows in here, maybe. I'll make this leg shadowed. And it's very easy to just sweep over the edges of my design here because of the alpha locking. I'm not painting over anything else. So I'll work on this for a little bit and then I'll show you the result. So here's the result after doing a little more shading. Now I just used the soft brush, but there's other brushes I could have used. For example, maybe I want to add some texture to this tree here. I would select the trees. Let's see what kind of brushes we have for trees. Maybe I want some type of crayon texture here and I can just add it into my trees here. And it's very easy to just color on just the trees. Let's see if that also looks good in the leaves here. So these are my plants. So again, I'm not coloring into the sky. It's just hitting my plants here because I have protect alpha on. I'll add some lighter texture in here. Maybe I want a little bit of yellow here and there. I could do the same for the grass below. I'll toggle this on and off so you can see this is the grass layer here. Let's give the grass a little bit of dark yellow. I'm liking this texture thing. It looks pretty cool. Of course, we don't want to overdo it. That's always a risk with these things. Whenever you like something, you tend to go crazy with it a little bit too much. But really, you see the power of controlling our shapes easily when we use the Protect Alpha feature. So again, this is Affinity Designer's Pixel Persona. I have a video on the Pixel Persona, so if you want to learn more about it, be sure to watch it. I'll put a link here. And if you have any questions about this video, of course, feel free to leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.